Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day that Yah has made, and we're going to rejoice, rejoice and be people. glad in this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful day, and Yah is so good yes, he is. that He gives us day to day like this, you know. It's mm -hmm. just a wonderful thing. I, I, I look forward to the next day because I know that all things are going to work together for our good. Yes. So but that that's that's more than reason to be happy for the day. That's right. Mm -hmm. Especially since tomorrow is not promised that's right. to any of us. So when we wake up uh, the next day, that is much to be thankful for. That's so we right. are grateful. I wanted to say this yes. uh, before anyone starts saying it in the chat. Mm -hmm. We have the fans going. So it's a little noisy. Yes. Okay, so we're going to try to speak as loudly as we can. Um, it's kind of warm today, very yes. warm, so we need those fans going right now, family. So yes. bear with us as we bring forth the word. Today we're going to be talking about deliberately defending of wickedness. Deliberate yes. defending of wickedness. Yes, absolutely. De deliberate defending of wickedness. Now, <clears throat> I got a scripture that I want to share with you. And I've seen so much of this going on over the years. And I have to shake my head because people don't know what they're getting into. And they don't understand what you're doing when you defend wickedness. Or you defend people that are in wickedness. Mm -hmm. Okay. But let's go to Psalms chapter 82 first. And we're going to start with there. Notice y'all who said people don't understand what they're getting into. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where that scripture comes in that says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. That's right. They're destroyed. So that means uh, even if you don't know, it can hurt you. That's right. You know, there's a saying that they have out in the world that doesn't line up with scripture. And they sure say, don't. what you don't know can't hurt you. Yeah. That was one of the biggest lies put out there because as it relates to the seed of Israel, yes. what you don't know can hurt you. It can kill you. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. now what if there's some poison in, in a cup and somebody hands you a cup, right? And you don't know. It's in the cup. <laughs> right? Right? Huh? Mm -hmm. well, ain't it going to kill you? Yeah. You right? can't say, well, I didn't know it was there, so I'm going to still be alive. <laughs> no, that ain't how it ain't works. That works. That's, That's right. not how it works. You know? What you don't know can hurt you. It can kill you. Yeah. It can kill or you, you. Or you go to jump in some water. You you down in Florida, and you jump in the water and not know it's an alligator in the pond. Mm -hmm. Right? You jumping in the water, just swimming around. It can kill you, right? Okay. Well, because I didn't know the alligators was there, they can't touch me. Oh, that no. don't make sense, dude. Don't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> That's right. It is what it is. That's we right. got to jump back into reality. That's right. So this is Psalms chapter 81, and we're going to read Psalms, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 82. Psalms chapter 82. Mm -hmm. It's a short chapter, so did you want me to read the whole thing? Uh, I no? guess you can read the whole chapter. Yeah, go ahead, read the whole chapter. Okay, it says, Elohim stands in the assembly of the mighty. He judges among the Elohim. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hands of the wicked. They know not, neither they will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Mm -hmm. All of the foundations of the earth are yes. out of course. I have said, ye are Elohim, and all of your children of El Elyon, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princess. Arise, O Elohim, judge the earth, for ye shall inherit all nations. Okay. Now, let's look at this scripture here. This is verse 2 that I really want to focus on. The King James says, how long will you judge unjustly and accept, and accept the, persons. the persons of the wicked? Mm -hmm. Now, the NIV Bible, let me show you how it interprets it. It says, how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Mm. 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 Are you hearing it now? Mm -hmm. Defending the wicked. We see it all the time. All of the time. All the time, right? Mm -hmm. Unrighteous judgment. We mm -hmm. see it all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to paint you a picture, and I'm going to show you how easily people can jump on the side of someone that's wicked, right? Mm -hmm. Because all the person got to do is have a little bit of um, clout. Mm -hmm. Let them be somebody that people know, 
uh, people um, are excited about in some kind of a way. A celebrity. A celebrity or whatever. And just watch how people just flock to them. But watch this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you about a celebrity, right? Now, I don't consider this person a celebrity, but they were well known throughout all the universe, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to pay attention because I'm going to tell you something here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when did sin begin? What was the first moment this sin actually showed its face in the universe? Was it with Adam and Eve? No. It was with Satan, right? Mm -hmm. It was with Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to paint you a picture, picture, right? So, in the heavens, right? Back in the eons of time, okay? Mm -hmm. You have the heavenly kingdom is going on, right? Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah's Present would, would come, presence would come into the kingdom of heaven, and as his presence came into the kingdom of heaven, the angels would all sing and worship, right? Mm -hmm. Because they saw his presence, they felt his presence come in there, right? Mm -hmm. And they saw the light come within them, right? Around them, right? Yes. And so Lucifer would play this beautiful music because he was Yah's orchestra, right? And he would usher in the presence of Yah with his music, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of the angels are sitting there watching in awe of all this majesty of Yahuwah, his spirit coming into the kingdom as it moved in the heavens, right? And so I want you to pay attention. So all of a sudden, Lucifer get this thought. It was just one thought, right? Mm -hmm. One little simple thought, right? And what was that thought? Let's go to it. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14. And this is verse 12 through 15. Now I want you to pay attention. Okay. Because this guy Lucifer was quite famous up in heaven. I mean, I mean the angels looked at him. They can see him. They couldn't see Yah, but they can see him. And they can see him and his beauty and all his wings and all the music going forth, right? This is Isaiah chapter 14, and we're going to read verses 12 through 15. Go ahead. How are you fallen from heaven, O Hylio, son of the howling morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For ye have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of El. I will sit also upon the mount of the assembly in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like El Elyon. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the sides of the pit. Okay, now, I want you to understand some a difference between the I will and the I am. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> the great I am is the I am of the heavens, right? He created everything. Everything came of him. His name is Yahuwah, mm -hmm. right? And then you have the great I will, which <laughs> ain't really that great, you know? But the great I will couldn't will. He couldn't, his will was strong enough to overwill the great I am. No. You understand? So then that, 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 that I will was only an I will that failed, right? Mm -hmm. Now, but watch this I will. When I will, when this, when this I will, this Lucifer stood out in the heavens and all the heavens watched him and he, that thought came to his mind, I will, I will, I will. Watch this. It was almost like something sparked in the heavens mm. because all the angels were like, oh, really? You, you going to what? You going to what? Oh, really? You going you to do what? You're going to sit above the, 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 the height of the, 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 the clouds and the, and the sides of the north. You go, you go, you go, you can raise your stars above y'all stars. You gonna be like the you most be high. Like El -El wow, that's awesome, dude. I'm totally with you. I want to follow you to the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you mean to tell me you get all this heavenly glory you looking at every day? Mm -hmm. Wasn't even a such thing as day and night. Time wasn't even it wasn't even created then, right? But no such thing as day and night. You get all this beautiful heaven, heavenly glory you looking at. You see, Yah, you you feel Yah's presence and all this beautifulness in heaven. And you mean to tell me you want to throw it all away for a thought? Mm, mm, mm. Just just so you can mm, worship mm, somebody mm. that you can see? Mm, mm, mm. 
That oh. sounds familiar because it reminds me of Israel because they wanted a king that they could see. Mm-hmm. We want a king. We want a God that we can see. We want a king that we can see. And Simon's <laughs> like, who is your king? But he's like, no, we want one that we can sing, that we can see. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm getting at? And so it's amazing that one third of heaven chose to follow Lucifer and he failed. He didn't even have the power to do all that. He just looked good. And that's the problem. And he was running his mouth. That's the problem. He running his mouth and he looked good. Now, how many times we see people out here running their mouth and they look good, though, right? They look good, right? And all the trimmings, you know? Got the fringes on, got everything looks so good to you, right? And you're like, oh, I think he's worthy to follow, right? Or they got the big church, the big mega church or whatever, and... And they yes. gotta hum just right <laughs> when they preach. They do all of this stuff, and so people are to- turned on by that. Yes. They become fans of it. Yes. Okay? Mm. Where did all this fan stuff come from? We just read about it. Those other angels became yep. fans of Lucifer because he yep. was so gorgeous and beautiful yep. to them. Yeah. Right? And he made all of this wonderful music, so they were fans. They were fans of him. Yep. And so we see that happening Mm-mm. today. You have people yep. with the same mindset where it's not good enough for them to serve the Most High. Yes. Even though he has shown forth his greatness and his majesty, yes. he is the creator of heaven and earth. Yes. He is the creator of all things that we see seen and unseen. That's right. But that's not good enough for you. That ain't you good want enough. something mm. you can see. Man. So since you can see Satan, mm. or Lucifer, mm. should I say, that's why all of these angels fell yes. with Lucifer because they wanted a God that they can see. Yep. Mm, mm, and so mm. we're going to be talking about this lack of judgment that the people of Yah have. Yes. Now, usually we're talking about Yah's judgment yes. upon mankind. So this is a different type of judgment we're talking about in this lesson. Okay. We're going to be talking yes. about how people fail to judge righteously That's right. situations that occur among them. That's right. And guess what? That unrighteous judgment. Remember how we talked yeah. about how Judah um, is basically put into a situation where the things that they have done uh, to their brothers and yes. sisters of the past are now happening to them? Yes. Well, guess what? Because Judah was an unfair and an unrighteous judge back in the day. Mm-hmm. The Most High has put us in a situation as the tribe of Judah to where we are sitting under unrighteous judges. Yeah. In society, you'll go before a court system and open a shut case to where you are either not guilty or something is supposed supposed to go in your favor. Yes. Right? But this unjust system. Yes. They turn the wheels of justice against you. Yes. And they say, you're guilty. Yes. When you're not. Or they say that the party who did something towards you Mm -hmm. is not guilty and you don't get no justice. You see what I'm saying? So in both directions, you either don't get justice or you found guilty for something you didn't do Mm. because we have been placed under unjust judges because of our failure as a people to be righteous judges. And guess what? And guess what? Even right now. We still fail to be righteous judgment That's as right. a people. That's right. As a whole, we fail. That's right. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to prove it to you, right? Mm-hmm. I'll never forget mm-hmm. back in the days when O.J. Simpson was mm-hmm. on trial. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I saw the trials. I saw a lot of the stuff that was going on. I heard all the stuff that was said. But, of course, there was um, reasonable doubt in both in both ways, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. There's reasonable doubt. Mm-hmm. There was no way I could 100% say that he was innocent or say that he was 100% guilty. So because of that, I kept off of it, right? Mm-hmm. I backed away from it. I said, I'm not going I'm not going to bank and say that I think he's innocent or I'm I'm for him because I think he's innocent. Of course, I saw what they were trying to do. You know what I mean? I saw what the def- what the um uh, prosecutors were trying to do, some of the things they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I had to sit back and say, "Wait a minute." I, I'm it, not going to side on either side. Right. I backed away from it, right? right? But I was shocked when O.J. Simpson got off, right? Mm-hmm. When he was acquitted and all these black folk were out in the street talking about we won. We What did we win? 
I'm like, we we won. We, we, we won. And it's like we won. We won. It's like, yeah, we won. They were partying like 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 a like a football team won. Mm. And I sat there and I'm sure, what am I seeing here? Right. I said, Y'all don't know if this man did it or not. Even I if see, he didn't, we don't know if he had something to do with it. Exactly. Just, be, just because he may not have did the deal exactly. doesn't mean that he didn't have anything to do with it. Exactly. So, again, I like Yahoo's position. We're not saying one way or another where he, yeah. whether he did or didn't. Yeah, I know, though, right? But the whole idea of our people out in the streets celebrating, talking about we won. Yes. It's ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It's when, ridiculous. He don't even oh, deal with our, our kind of people, right? You, you know what's so, funny? <laughs> When O.J. Simpson was in a lamb, like, he didn't have nothing to do with us. Period. So black folk. You know, and so I <laughs> sat there and I, I scratched my head. I said, man, this is some strange stuff. And so we won, huh? I'm like, well, what did we win? Nothing. Nothing. And so that being said, I'm going to tell you what I've noticed about our people, okay? We have a strange way of joining up with the wicked. With the wicked. Let me tell you something. Let me prove it to you, right? You let you let people come and say, you know what? The proof is actually I'm I'm gonna tell you the, the proof, right? Because when when you look at at um the Jezebel, right, and how she got all of Israel to side on her, side with her, yeah. side with her. She had two men of Belial come and lie on this. On uh, uh, who was it? No, uh, uh, was it Nate? Nate? It starts with an E, y'all. Yeah, na- na- bomb or na- <laughs> na- neighbor, for, mm-hmm. you know his name. But anyway, she lied on him, right? She had two men lie on him mm-hmm. so that Ahab could get his vineyard, right? Mm-hmm. And notice, she got all of Israel to side with her on these lies. Now get this. She wasn't even an Israelite. Nope. She was a heathen. She was a heathen. But she got the children of Yashrael yep. to side with her wickedness. With her wickedness. And guess what they did? They put they, they put him to death. Mm-hmm. You know? And so the point that I'm trying to make is you got to look at this thing, right? It's it I've never I've seen it happen so many times mm-hmm. where you you could pull two people together. Like you you can have a situation, right? You can have let's say you at choir rehearsal, right? Mm-hmm. And at choir rehearsal, you got one person that's being disrespectful, right? Mm-hmm. To the Choir conductor, right? Mm-hmm. And the choir, choir conductor pulls the person aside. He said, "We're gonna have a meeting here with this person here, John here, with John." And he sits John down in front of everybody. He says, "Well, I'm having a problem with John here because he's constantly disrespecting me. You know, he's constantly interrupting. He's constantly disrespecting me and interfering. You know, and so when 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 when, when he gets judged by the conductor." Then John walks away and watch the number of people that are jump on John's side. I don't agree with that. I, I see. I see. I see. Well, he ain't I, being I, fair I, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh uh-uh. uh. I see what's going on. Mm-hmm. I feel you. I feel you, brother. I, I I see why you don't like him. I see why you hate him. Yeah, I get it. If I, I see. You, I wouldn't even be in the choir anymore. Woo! As I'm a telling fact, you. If you leave, I might leave too. I'm telling you, we as a people are cut like that. Mm-hmm. We are cut like that, right? A person can be stealing something from you, right? And and that person in the store from you two, three times will go back and talk to somebody else. And that other person will be sitting there like, I get you, man. I understand why you did it. <laughs> I get it, man. I understand it. They can afford it. You know, they I get it. They won't miss it. They ain't going to miss it. And you'll be sitting there saying to yourself, man. And they, we, they'll even convince themselves yep. that you owe it to them. Yeah. I'm t- that's the kind of wickedness that I'm talking about that we do as a people, we have no sense of righteous judgment. And so and that it shows. Is, and that is why we're talking about this today. And one of the reasons why we continue to see the judgment of Yah yep. in the so-called black community. Because we fail to judge situations properly. properly. And we don't even like to deal with the subject. Okay, we talk about Yah's judgment. Yep. We understand his judgment. And, and get this, some people don't even understand his judgment. Sometimes yeah. the Most High can judge a person because of sin, yes. but people won't even accept it as such. They yeah. won't even accept it as the judgment of Yah. Yes. They they put wings on everybody that die. Everybody get wings. Yeah. As if nobody is 
going to hell anymore. Yeah. And this is because we don't understand Yah's judgment. He yeah. wants us. He says, know ye not that ye shall judge nations? Wow. But you can't even judge these simple matters among you, right? Yeah. And Yahoo brought up Jezebel. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit yeah. and talk about Jezebel for a moment. Mm -hmm. Within our community as a people, people are to constantly tossing around um, the Jezebel, the term Jezebel, like a frisbee. Yeah. Um, this person is a Jezebel. That person is a Jezebel. She's a Jezebel. She's a Jezebel. They're always saying, oh, she got the Jezebel spirit. She got it. She got it. She got it. Mm -hmm. The women got the Jezebel spirit. The, the, the Jezebel spirit is all over these women. Yeah. This is because you don't understand Yah's word. You don't yeah. understand how to judge righteously. Yeah. If you understood his word, if you understood what scripture said, then you wouldn't be uh, tagging every woman with the Jezebel spirit. Yeah. This is because there is unrighteous judgment. Okay, there are problems with the women right but because you don't judge fairly or righteously you call it a jezebel spirit when many times it's just a haughty spirit yes okay the jezebel spirit we did a whole series on that yes most people don't even understand they don't understand that the jezebel spirit ain't got nothing to do with some of the stuff you brothers be saying it's the jezebel spirit that, that's First why all, she moves like she does because right. she goes undetected because you don't know what she is and nobody wants to line her up with ahab yeah so let me say it one more time in this message real briefly so anyone who's watching this who doesn't know or understand what the jezebel spirit is jezebel was a foreign woman married to a wicked israelite king that's the first thing the second thing is this. She was a woman who killed the true prophets of Yah yeah. so that she can elevate her false prophets. Yeah. Okay? That was another attribute yeah. of Jezebel. Yeah. What else did she do? Jezebel, and we're going we gonna to bring this another time. Yeah. She was a submissive wife. <laughs> she submitted to Ahab. She did whatever Ahab wanted. She got him whatever he wanted, right? Right. She got him whatever he wanted. He was like, oh, you going to do this for me? Oh, okay. You going to kill the prophets and do this? Oh, well, so right. that I can right be elevated. You know, let me let me appoint something out to you, right? <laughs> Watch this, right? How did Jezebel even get into the house of Israel? Mm -hmm. How did she get there? She married did she just in. Did she just walk and knock on the door and they just open it? Come on into Israel, Jezebel. Nope. An Israelite king, put a, a man, on. He put a ring on went it. and found her, <laughs> put a ring on her, and brought her into Israel. Now, we know the custom back then wasn't to put a ring on it. I'm just saying that right. so you all understand that he married he her. He married her. <laughs> right. So, so how did she get there? He brought her there. The man brought her there. Right? The king of let, Judah. Let me explain something to you, right? When you look out here in our society... And you do see Jezebel spirits, right? Mm -hmm. or, or people with the Jezebel spirit. Let me tell you something. If they're there, that's because there's an Ahab there. Mm -hmm. Jezebel cannot operate in Israel except there be an Ahab. Yes. Because Ahab opens the door for Absolutely. her. Absolutely. And gives her her way. Mm -hmm. And let her come in and do the wickedness that she wants to do. That's she right. need a powerful king like Ahab mm -hmm. to open the door for her. That's right. Because if Ahab don't open the door, Israel wouldn't have accepted her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. Wow. The king opened the door. That's right. King Ahab opened the That's door. That's right. You see, but if, now, the, if the people stood their righteous ground, if they yep. stood their ground... And righteousness, yeah. it wouldn't have been allowed. That's right. But again, so we, we just we just <laughs> explained that for those of you who keep yeah. on saying, all the daughters of Zion got the spirit of Jezebel. Now, that's not to say that there are none who don't. Oh, yeah. Because I've seen some, yeah. and they have the same spirit that Jezebel of old had. They support wicked men, and they uphold them in their wickedness. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. what Jezebel that's did. How you, yeah. uh, that's how you determine who has the Jezebel spirit. Not because some woman doesn't agree with what you are teaching. You or because some... she challenges you on some yeah. mess that you're trying to put out here. Or because she don't want to be your second, third, or fourth wife. You want to know something? If I were to find a New Testament example of Jezebel, I would say it would be Sapphira. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good example. <laughs> because she was like, oh, we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. Oh, okay, let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. And right? Rice and Sapphira, when her wicked husband did something wicked, she was right there with right him. Right there with him. 
You see? And, and and she was foolish enough to believe that the men of Yah didn't know. When she, when she gave her answer, you, you were foolish enough to believe that they didn't know. Wow. Already. What you and your husband had conspired to do? He was right. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Interesting, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, see? See, that's the truth. See, we we, we talking about the truth. Forget <clears throat> about all these these concepts and things people pushing out here. Mm -hmm. Truth is truth, truth, right? Truth is truth. It is what it is. It is what it is. Truth will always be <laughs> whether we like it or not. Whether you truth like it or not. do not cease to exist because you don't accept it. <laughs> you see? Yeah. <clears throat> now, I got a scripture for you, right? I got a scripture for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Watch this, because I'm telling you, we as a people do this thing, and that's what's happening. We are siding too much with the wicked, <clears throat> and when you side with the wicked, let me explain something to you. Right. Pay attention. Right. Pay attention. So then, a young man goes out here in the world, and he does some heinous crime. He didn't kill somebody. He didn't did this other crime here. Did that other crime there. And they didn't arrested him. They didn't put him in jail. Or they didn't shot and killed him, right? And what do you see the parents, right? We, right away you see the parents. Oh, my boy. My boy this, my boy that, right? He was such a good young man and all this. This man didn't kill somebody. Mm -hmm. He didn't went and did something wicked, right? Mm -hmm. My poor son, my poor boy, you know, and all this. You better be careful of that stuff because you're siding with that wickedness. Yes. That's why y'all bring that judgment mm -hmm. because he's tired of us siding with that wickedness, mm -hmm. right? This boy, let me tell you something. Woo, y'all forbid because my sons know, my children know, mm -hmm. you better not do nothing bad out here because you're going to have to deal with me. And me. And mommy. <laughs> and and y'all. Yes. And I hope you don't have to deal with the authorities too. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not just because you, if you did wickedness, that's why y'all send the authorities. Mm -hmm. That's why he put, that's why he put the the wicked nations on us in the first place because we did wickedness. That's what the scriptures say. You know, and so we got to be careful with that. You, I'm telling you right now, you better hear what I'm saying here. You mothers and fathers out here, you got children doing wickedness, right? They doing all this wickedness and you siding with them. You better back up. You better, you suppose, you know what you're supposed to do? you supposed to talk to that boy and you to that young lady. you supposed to tell them, you know, you were wrong for what you did. You were wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you were wrong for what you did. And I hope you learn your lesson. Mm -hmm. That's how you got to come at them. Because if you sit back, uh, oh, it's okay, but baby. But that's my baby, it's, though. It's, a, it's okay, <laughs> baby. It's okay, big old 30-year-old man. You know, you my baby, though, you know. You got to let go of that crazy stuff. Now, see, now get this. <laughs> get this, family. We are not saying not to love your children if they... See, a lot of people get stuff They get wrong. stuff mixed up, they, yeah. They say, well, so what you selling? Are we supposed to turn our back on them? So what you telling? We ain't supposed to we love them? We didn't say that. We're, We're saying, saying that, that when they do wickedness, mm -hmm. you got to stand your ground and stand let them know. Ground. Okay, okay, now wait a minute. Watch this, right? So then, let's say your boy goes to the store, right? And he's with you, right? You in the store shopping, right? And then you look over and your boy got his pocket stuffed with watches and stuff mm -hmm. that he that took from the store, right? And you look and you see them watches in his pocket, right? So what you can, you can just, uh, oh, that's a good boy, you know, I love you. I'm, I, 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 I thank the mm -hmm. most high for you, you know? I love you. You better yank that stuff out that boy's pocket before they find out or they gonna be taking both of y'all in. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Too much in the black community we see, just like we said, deliberate defense yes. of wickedness. Deliberate. Deliberate. Meaning you know that something wicked have taken place. Yep. You know that, and it doesn't just have to be children. That's one of the easiest examples to articulate to you all. But yes. it's, it's, a, it's across the board, even with celebrities and things of that nature. People can live wicked lifestyles, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You see? But we have this thing to where we don't want to hold people accountable. Mm -hmm. They exactly. don't want to be hold, held accountable yeah. for their wickedness. Exactly. Now, when you are a parent, when you're a parent, it's, it's, it's one of those things where a, a person feels like, well, that's my baby. Uh, they didn't ask to be here. That's one of the most foolish excuses I've heard. They didn't exactly. ask to be here. Okay, well, maybe they didn't, but they're here. Yes. Okay, and if they are doing wickedness, you have got to 
um, hold them accountable for it. One of the things that I see a lot in the black community that I can't stand is when you have a son who is abusive to either a girlfriend or a wife. Yeah. Okay. Parents know about it. They know that he's beating his wife or beating um, his girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But they won't side with the woman. They side with their son. Yes. Well, you can't expect me to go against my son. You need to get in the book. Okay? You need to get in the word because the most yeah. high, he have expectations that's different yes, than he does. I will not. One, if one of my sons ever tried to do some mess like that. <laughs> they won't just have to deal with my husband. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to deal with me too. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever think that I'm going to be on your side if you put your hands on a young woman. Boy, okay, I'm now, you, now let me clarify something. Ain't no young man, uh, shouldn't no young man allow a woman to, to abuse him either, right? right? I think in that situation, you get the heck out as quickly as you can. But I'm talking about abusive men who, that's their MO. They abuse a woman. They're hurting her, breaking limbs and b blacking eyes and doing all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. A parent should not be deliberately defending that kind of foolishness. No. I, I, I tell you, it's really sad because I've seen it over the years. Parents backing up ch children, doing some wickedness out there. You be sitting back like, man, like, man, he's selling big drugs and they know it. That's because he bought daddy it. a car. Know it. And well, he I, bought I, mama a car. <laughs> I, I'll never forget. Let me tell you something. i never forget of an incident years ago where not only were the son selling drugs, the dad decided he's going to start selling them too. Mm. And I sat there saying to myself, I said, man, am I seeing this? Is this for real? Mm, mm, mm. You know, I'm like, man, I, 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 I'm trying to understand this thing, right? And guess what? He had a very good job making good money. But yet he decided to veer off and start selling drugs. Mm, mm, I mm. said, man, this is some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Jeremiah. I want you to see this is what Yah is talking about that he don't like. Yah don't like this here, y'all, because this is what happens, right? Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 14. Read that verse. It says, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem, a horrible thing. A horrible thing. Go they ahead. They break wedlock and walk in lies. Uh huh. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. Yes. That none returns from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sidom and the inhabitants thereof as Amora. Gomorrah. So notice he says, they strengthen the hands of the wicked. You Do you know what he means when he says that? They strengthen the hands of the wicked. They strengthen them because what they do is they encourage them. Mm -hmm. They like enablers. They grab them and they hold mm -hmm. them and, they, and they, they, won't, they won't push them away. They won't tell them, you know what? Oh, man, because you didn't did this, dude. I oh, can't okay. fellowship with mm -hmm. you no more. Step back. So you're supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be like, you know what? Because of what you didn't did, this wickedness you didn't did, I can't fellowship with you. I can't fellowship with you because you have done wickedness. Mm -hmm. And you'll come and you say, yeah, but I'm sorry. Are you sorry? You haven't repented. It's still in you. You have done weak and you and you expect right fellowship and the scripture tale told you don't fellowship with such a person. Right? They have a, no fellowship. They have no, no 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 she said he says they commit adultery, they break wedlock, right? And walk in lies and they strengthen the hands of evil evildoers. And guess what happens when they do that? That none do have return from this wickedness. That's what happens when you strengthen the hands of a wicked person. Yes. Because they won't repent. They'll say, oh, you, you good with me doing this? Oh, man, ain't that something? Oh, you good with me too? Uh, oh, oh, everybody oh, cool? Everybody cool with me, right? Cover me and I cover you? Well, that's like in the church, right? That's so where so that you got from. a pedophile in the church that messes around with some young child or something, right? And then, then, he, then he gets convicted or whatever, right? And, and, and everybody is, is cuddling him. Oh, that's all right, man. That's all right. We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be praying for you, you know? That poor child, nobody praying for that little child. Mm, mm, mm. It, this society is sick. Think about the, the whole idea of we're going to be praying. Like your prayers. Do you understand what prayer is? Mm, mm, mm. Prayer is communication with the Most High. Who are you praying to? <laughs> 
See, the Most High, he's a righteous Elohim. He's a righteous judge. Mm, mm, mm. And so you sit back praying for a wicked person. This is why I say people don't understand even prayers. That's a That should be a very basic yeah. thing, right? Prayer should be very basic. Yes. That's all the scripture say. When you pray, don't pray amiss. Mm -mm. Okay? Pray with mm. understanding. People pray amiss because they think that their prayer is the end all, do all of what situation needs to be resolved. Mm -hmm. When you are praying, you are communicating with the Most High. Keep that in mind. So if you go to Yah about a situation, understand how he works and how he moves. If you say, Abba Yah, uh, this person over here who is committing this wickedness, I want you to um, bless them so that they don't commit wickedness again, right? I'm just keeping it very simple, yeah. right? So what is Yah going to do? He's not going to just siphon the wickedness out of him by sucking it out and spitting it out like that. <laughs> That's not how y'all works. He's going to send some storms that person's way, some yeah. tests, some trials, some tribulations. That will cause him some, to repent. Some judgment, some, yeah. some um, chastisement. He's going to send stuff his way. If it's for yes. him to repent, first of all, he has to be granted repentance. Yes. If it is for that person to repent, he's not going to just wake up one day and say, oh, I just want to be a good person. Yes. The most I go sense of stuff because he first of all has yep. to deal with the wickedness that that person has already put out into the world. That's right. You got to reap what you sow. It co everything comes full circle. You have to reap what you sow. So yes. if you go out here and you do some stuff, you have to pay the the uh, pay the price. Uh, reap the consequences of your actions and the Most High can work all of that stuff for your good yes. if you are called according to His purpose. Now, I want you to understand something, right? When it says this in this scripture, right? They strengthen the hands of evil evildoers that none doeth return from his wickedness. Mm. Do you not know you are in interfering with their repenting? Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. yes. Are you hearing me? You are interfering with their repentance. Yes. Yes. You see, when you push them away and you show them that they've done wrong and they feel sorrowful unto right, repentance, right. then they say, man, I've, done, I've truly sinned. They I've feel truly conviction. done something wrong. When they feel that conviction, now they can repent. But guess what? Because you strengthen their hands mm -hmm. so that none do return from his wickedness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah said this is what was going on in Israel. Mm-hmm. 2,000, more than 2,000, 3,000 years ago, this was going on in Israel, mm -hmm. and it's going on among us today. Today. The same thing. We strengthen the hands of the evildoers, and this is why we don't see repentance in the land. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't see it among our own people. We don't see it because we are too busy strengthening their hands. That's right. Patting them on their back. Right. Tell them, you know what, man? I understand, man. Ain't you nobody know, perfect. Let me tell you something, we man. all sin. But look at Ock. Let me tell you something, man. I get it, man. I get it, man. Yeah, you, you shot them three people in their head, you know? They all died, and, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I, I understand, man. I understand. You were upset that day, man. You upset, man. You people know? You got to understand. You, you got a right to be mad, yeah, too. Yeah, you were just mad, you know? So, brother, I'm going to be praying for you, man. When you get out of jail and everything, I'm going to be praying for you. You know, I, that sounds stupid, don't it? Yes, it does. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. we, don't judge, we don't judge righteously at all. I mean, we shared with you all some time ago, there was an incident where um, there was a, a man who killed his first wife and kids. And there was a pastor that was dealing with him. Oh, yeah. While he was in prison. And so apparently the man said he repented, blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. Keep yep. in mind, he killed his Listen. first wife and kids. Yep. And so this pastor foolishly thought that this man was repentant. And when he got out of prison, yep. he let him marry his own daughter. Listen. And he ended up killing her as well. I'm sorry. Y'all can have that Christian mindset all you want. That Christian foolishness. Now we're not talking about a person. That, that is some horrible stuff. But I, I, you know what? Mm -hmm. I bet that pastor got to be sitting back saying to himself, mm -hmm. "What did I go wrong?" He probably looking through the scriptures. He says, "Love, love one yeah, another, and forgive, and, forgive and, and do unto others you would have them do unto the you." And man, I, I did all that the word said do. And he repented, him, so we supposed to forgive him. Uh, and he probably sitting back just messed up, knowing that his daughter lost her life to that Negro. You have to understand, a person who kills his wife and kids, that's a specific demon you're dealing with. This ain't a person who was driving a car and they had an accident and 
and the wife and kids died as a result of reckless driving. That wasn't a situation like that. We're talking about a person who purposed within their own minds and hearts. I'm taking her life. I'm taking their lives. You understand what I'm saying? This ain't a light that crime. Is, right. This ain't, this ain't like somebody this who just came and, and he, he came and he, he stole your lawnmower out your garage, you know? <laughs> this is something major, right? Do, do you understand when a person commits that type of crime, you killed your wife and your kids, that there was a demon, and just because you went to jail doesn't mean, or prison, doesn't mean that demon was dealt with. It's still there. That was the grave error that that pastor made. Yes. He didn't understand. That's why I say my people are destroyed for what the they don't understand, yeah. for the lack of knowledge, yeah. for what you don't know, you can be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So what this pastor didn't understand is that that demon wasn't cast out because he went to prison. Mm -mm. Nobody ever nope. dealt with that demon that nope. caused him to take the life of his first wife and children. We wrestle yeah. not against flesh and blood, family. We have to understand that there are spiritual consequences to natural actions. Yes. And so we cannot afford to deliberately defend wickedness mm -mm. because there are consequences. Let me tell you something. I, I've seen it too many times. It always comes back to you. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? It always comes back. It's like a boomerang. Mm -hmm. When you get to defending this wicked stuff and, and defending all this wicked stuff and, 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 and upholding it and strengthening the hands of the wicked, mm -hmm. it always comes back to get you. Mm -hmm. Because Yah's going to make sure that it comes back. Mm -hmm. That's his word. Whatsoever man sow, that shall he reap. That's yes. the word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to the scripture here. This is in Exodus. I want you to pay attention to this passage here because this passage, we didn't read it before, talked about it before. But this statement that's made here is enough to get your attention. Watch mm -hmm. this. This is Exodus chapter 32, and this is verse 21 through 29. Exodus chapter 32, verses 21 through 29, reads as follows. <clears throat> and Moshe said unto El Aaron, What did the people, what did this people unto you? That you have brought so great a sin upon them. Now, now let me stop you real, real quickly because I got to bring you up to up to speed on what's going on. Okay, this is when Moses went up into the mount, right, and had fasted those forty days, and he was came down with the uh, with the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. and the children of Israel had sinned. They when Moses took so long, they commissioned Aaron to to to, to take gold and to make a golden calf and. Mm -hmm. And they were just just fornicating and doing all kind of crazy stuff. So when Moses came down, this is what this is how he approached Aaron, and this is what he said to him. Okay, keep reading. And Aaron said, "Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. You know, the people that they are set on mischief." Now watch this. He said, "Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. They set on it." They're set on it. It's in their wait, wait a minute. It's embedded. So Moses was gone up for 40 days, right? And so I guess after 10 days and 20 days, that mischief was just boiling in their heart. They couldn't wait. You know couldn't what? Couldn't sit still. They couldn't sit still. After 30 days, you know what? It's been 40 days now, man. Moses praying and died up there, man. Come on, let's just get, come on, come on, get some gold. Let's do this thing. They were set on it. Are you hearing me? They couldn't wait for the opportunity to... To what? Fulfill that wickedness that was in their heart. Mm. Yes. Keep going. For they said unto me, Make us Elohim. Yes. Which shall go before us. For as for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, uh -huh. we know what, we know not <laughs> what has become of him. <laughs> Did I say it? Mm -hmm. Keep going. And I said unto them, Whosoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moshe saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moshe stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yahuwah's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus says Yahuwah Eloha of Yashrael, Put every man his sword by his side, 
and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moshe. And there fell of them that day about 3,000 men. For Moshe has said, Consecrate yourselves today to Yahuwah, mm -hmm. even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Now, I want you to pay attention to something right mm -hmm. here, because we're talking about deliberately defending the wickedness, right? Wickedness mm -hmm. and wicked people, right? Mm -hmm. Getting on their side. Now, guess what? Yah expects you to choose sides. Yes, and when does. you choose the wrong side, yes. that judgment is going to mow you down. Yes. Do you hear me? It's going to come after you and it's going to just mow you down like a lawnmower, right? Mm -hmm. Notice what Moses said here, right? He says, he says, verse 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on Yahuwah's side? Mm -hmm. Let him come unto me. Now, you, they should have been breaking their leg getting over there to Moses. Mm -hmm. But you mean to tell me some stood back looking over there like this here? More than 3,000 men stood back looking over there like this here? Like, who are you, Moses? More of us than over there with you. Do you and this the Levites? You know what y'all going to do? You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you right now, this don't make no sense. Then he said, who's, then, it, when, then when, they, when they showed whose side they were on, then that's when Yah told them, okay, now kill them all. Mm, mm, mm. Don't wow. you understand this thing is for real? Mm -hmm. This walk is for real? And through the things that you do, the things that you say, and the actions that you make, is determining whose side you're on, whether you're on the side of wickedness or whether you're on the side of righteousness? Now, what's sad about this whole thing, you made a very valid point. Yah expects us yes. as his children to choose a side. Yes. But see, the problem is when we're judging situations between people, we automatically assume that we're judging between those people. But when there is an unrighteous deed done or an unrighteous act that has yes. taken place, you're not choosing a person's side. That This is why Yah said, this is why Moshe said, Whoever's on Yah's side, stand with me. Yes. Whoever is on Yah's side, stand with me. So yes. in a situation where an unrighteous act has occurred, even though it's among people, when you choose the side of the wicked, yes. you are actually choosing against Yah. Yeah. Okay? Wow. See, the problem is people think, uh, well, you know, let, let's just get use a situation where it's two friends. Yeah. That one have sinned against the other. And then there's a third friend that is a mutual friend of both, right? And that mutual friend doesn't want to choose a side. Yeah. But they don't realize Yah expects them to choose a side. Yah expects you to choose a side when something unrighteous has happened. Now we're talk we're not talking about two people who had a disagreement. Right. Something small or minor. We're talking about big major things right. that happen in the black community. Okay? Or period. <clears throat> And I, I gave a really good example of children yes. um, who do wickedness, um, like a son who may beat his wife. <clears throat> the Most High expects you to choose a side, parents. Yes. And when you choose your child's side, mm -hmm. you have chosen against the Most High. That's right. You've chosen against Yah. And so that is counted as wickedness against you because you did not choose the side of righteousness. And so that is one very important thing that we don't see today, that our people uh, make righteous judgments. We always, yeah. when you, uh, even, even when you're looking at things that happen with celebrities, these celebrities yeah. sometimes be wicked as all get out. And like I said, we keep on seeing angel wings pop up on these people. Yeah. And one thing that I notice among Israelites, whenever you have a celebrity, who um, acknowledges that he is an I Israelite, they yeah. acknowledge that they're an Israelite, automatically people say, oh, he woke. Mm, mm, mm. Your acknowledgement of being an Israelite doesn't make you righteous. It doesn't make you woke. Yeah. <clears throat> you see, and so when these people die or something tragic happened to them, it is automatically assumed that um, Satan did this, that, or the other. Mm, mm, mm. What we don't realize is that Yah allows Satan to do whatever it is, yes. whether he does, whether he's allowed to do something to me or you. He has to clear that with Yah first, 
And finding out that you are an Israelite doesn't mean that you're righteous. It doesn't mean that all automatically you have become holy. Oh, he, he woke. Just because he knows he's an Israelite. This is why we make unfair judgments yes. when people fall into mischief. Yes. And they just so happen to know that they're an Israelite and they don't fell into mischief. You all are putting wings on their backs. And the Most High may be judging them. <clears throat> Yep. That's one thing that we as a people, we have to understand. We got to stop doing this. Yeah. Because he expects us to judge fairly. Because if we don't, you see what happened to these, the 3,000? Yeah. When they did not stand on the side of Moshe, they were actually standing against Yah. Yah sent the angel of death to consume them. Yeah. The Levites picked up swords and cut them all down. Mm-hmm. He had the priests do it. Isn't that mm -hmm. something? He had the priest do it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that was Yah's judgment call. Yeah. <laughs> that was his judgment call. Sure was. Now I want you to understand something, right? Now, it's it just behooves me when people, I tell you, people are, are really starstruck and celebrity struck. Mm -hmm. They just starstruck and celebrity struck. Let me point. Let me let me let me point something out to you, right? Okay. When you say someone is awoke, they're woke to righteousness, right? Woke being awoke is like being alive. Pay attention. I got scripture. Pay attention. Being woke is like being alive. Being sleep is like being dead. Look at the parallelness of it, right? Being woke is like being alive. Now when you go to Romans chapter six, right? And it talks about, right, being alive unto righteousness, but dead unto sin. Mm -hmm. Alive unto righteousness, dead unto sin. And that, so, you know you're an Israelite? Judas knew he was an Israelite. <laughs> right? You got to understand what we're talking about here. You're not, oh, you're awoke when you're living a righteous life. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you're living a righteous life. Not because you find out you're an Israelite. Now, why do we keep saying this, family? There is an ignorant narrative that continues to play out all over the yes. internet among so-called Israelites. It's frustrating. It you're is here. very frustrating. Yes, it is. The, the same talking points over and over yes. and over about foolishness. Defending, deliberately defending wickedness. And... As long as people continue to deliberately defend wickedness, we will continue to rebuke it. Right. Because the scripture tells us to admonish one another daily, right? People do repent. And so this is why we have to continue to cry aloud and spare not and lift up our voices like trumpets in Zion yes. and show our people their transgressions. We have to continue to do this because the wickedness continues to, to happen, right? Yes. Our people continue to declare that people are awake because of knowledge of self. Knowledge of self does not save you, family. It does not save you. If nope. your life doesn't change, if your heart isn't right, mm -hmm. if your ways are still the yeah. same, but you just happen to wear the garments and, and know some of the language and, you, and, and do all of the feasts and all of this kind of stuff, you are still asleep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You still You're still sleep. dead and trespasses still dead and sins, and sins yep. until you repent. Until you repent. Period. But you know how you can tell? Look, the scriptures tell you you're going to have fruit. Yes. You judge a tree by its fruit, mm -hmm. right? You got the fruit of the spirit, right? And you got and you got the fruit of the spirit as it relates to um, love, joy, peace, and all of those things, right? And you have the gifts of the spirit, mm -hmm. right? You judge a tree by a fruit, right? You don't see no gifts, you don't see no fruit, then that should tell you, okay, wait a minute, mm -hmm. you're not alive. Then that's why Paul. That's why Paul spoke like he did mm -hmm. about being. Don't walk like somebody that walks in the night, right? Mm -hmm. Walk like somebody that walks in the light. Somebody that's alive. Yes. That's alive from the dead is what he said. Mm -hmm. So, I, I tell you, it, it's really frustrating. Like my wife said, it's frustrating because we keep hearing the same narrative. Oh, he woke. Oh, he woke. Oh, he woke. Oh, he know the truth. Oh, he know the truth. Does he, he live in it? Does he live in it? Is he free from it? Yeah. Free is he, by is he it, should free I from say. sin? Yeah. Right. Yeah, because the scripture says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah. Right? Are you free? Or are you still bound, or, yes. or are you still stuck in uh, trespasses and sin? Exactly. Right. So we have to rightly divide Yah's word and stop deliberately defending wickedness. We got to cut our. First of all, 
The scripture tells us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Yeah. For he that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And many times, most of the people that we defend in wickedness are yeah. people who are lovers of the world. Yes, right. People who are married to the world. People who um, support the world and that, that are of the world. That's right. People who do not separate themselves from the world. That's now, when right. I say that, I'm not talking about your everyday life and living and your interactions with people. Yes. I'm talking about people who are locked and tied to the ways of the world. <laughs> yes. You know how um, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire had the song, That's the Way of the World? It says, a child is born with a heart of gold, but the ways of the world makes your heart grow cold. That's right. The scripture actually talks about that. It says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of and many, many shall, shall wax, wax cold. cold. Right. And so that's what we see. We see a lot of people who have this cold love. Yes. It's wax cold in them. There is no real love. It's very difficult to find real love in humanity. Yes. People verbally love you, but their actions say something totally different. And don't yeah. even line up with scripture, right? But people, they are they are living out the, the fantasies of their flesh, yes. right? And they are trying to bring the fantasies of their flesh into to spirituality. They're trying to give Yah's endorsement. They're trying to make it seem as though Yah endorses their wickedness, their deliberate, yes. deliberate wickedness. This is why you have um, the whole... LGBT movement yes. all up in the church now because yeah. you have people who deliberately defend it. They don't see anything wrong with it anymore. Yeah. Back in the day, uh, the preacher stood up for what they thought was right. Yeah. Right? Uh, many of you may remember that Church of God in Christ minister who's uh, talking about um, who, uh, look at the preacher in the window. You, he, he, he can just, uh, you, all you got to do is buy him something and he, he going to shut his mouth about everything. Every sin that come up in there, he ain't going to say nothing about, say nothing nothing, about yeah. it. I forget what he called them exactly, but it was a very popular clip that um, I saw he many years him, ago. Um, he talking about the one where he called him um, a Happy Meal preacher? Or something, something like that. <laughs> but somebody recently shared it with me, too, but I, yeah. I had seen it years ago. But he was a Church of God Cheap of Christ preacher minister. preacher or something he called yep. like they were And he was, he was pointing them all out, too. He was standing there, and he was telling them, you got, you got them up in the church just letting them do whatever they want to do, and you ain't got nothing to say mm. because they keep the crowds coming. They keep bumping on the organ, got the music playing, got yeah. everybody jumping in the house, and you don't want to say nothing to them because you are scared, you're afraid to lose that money. Mm, mm, mm. It's sad. Deliberate yeah. defending of wickedness. Of wickedness. It's sad the number of churches I have seen, that I have seen where conductors and people in the choir, running the choir, would be homosexual. And you sit there and say, man, is, it every, is this the norm now for churches, right? That you go find a homosexual and bring them up in the church? It's like it's the normal thing now. Oh, you know, the old, those, those gays, they got a lot of um, spunk, you know? It's, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this stuff. It's crazy. You know, it's absolutely crazy the way the church have succumbed to wickedness. It ain't just the homosexuality stuff. It's all kinds of stuff going on in the churches now. Fornication, adultery, um, um, stealing, just all kinds of crazy stuff going on up in the church. And they just sit back and it's just going like it's, like it's normal now. Mm, mm, mm. Nobody wants to speak against it. Nobody wants to speak Everybody against it. Everybody is afraid to. Yeah. I mean, we, under, we understand when the scripture says all have sinned. I want you all to understand something. When we talk about things, we are not sitting up here as if we think we're perfect, as if right, we've exactly. never sinned. Okay? But you have to draw the line. When you repent, once you repent, this is why the scripture tells us to admonish one another <clears throat> daily, right? We have to admonish one another. If you are repentant, you can declare the word of Yah to your brethren. Okay? Right. Listen. You can declare the word of Yah to your brethren. Listen. So we don't sit up here like we believe or think that we're perfect. Understand that. Right. But we have, the scripture says you have to warn the wicked. We have to warn one another. Yeah. Because Yah's spirit does not always strive with man. Right. It doesn't always strive with yeah. man. So we have to repent. Yes. That is the bottom line. We all must yes. repent. We understand that all have yes. sinned and all have all fallen fall short so, yeah. of the glory of Yah. But we cannot harp on the sins and say, look, I can continue in sin because grace will abound. <laughs> no, you can't do that. 
We have to let it go, family. Yeah, let it go. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna shine some light on this thing for you, right? I'm gonna tell you what the problem is, right? So watch this, right? So you got Sister Geraldine, right? Who used to be out there, really out there, you know? And Sister Geraldine, you know, when she was out there in the world, she did a little, she was into heavy into adultery and fornication, you know? She may even did a little prostitution, right? And Sister Geraldine, through her walk, right? She came to know the Most High and she repented, right? And when she repented, right, she started to walk up right and she received the Holy Spirit and she's been walking up right all her life and just doing this thing right, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you what the problem is, right? I'm going to tell you what the problem is now. Sister Geraldine now is supposed to separate herself from her old life because the scripture says what? Mm -hmm. If any man be a Yahushua Mashiach, he, he is, is a, a new, new creature. creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Behold, all things are of Yah. So then she's supposed to separate herself and say, oh, that was the old me. Mm -hmm. I'm a new person. I'm a new creature now. That was my old woman. She's dead, right? Mm -hmm. That was my old man for you homies. He's dead. That ain't you no more. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, Sister Geraldine, she's free. She's a new creature. And now she comes across this young lady named Linda. And Linda has some serious issues. Mm -hmm. She's been out there. She's been fornicated. She done did all these things, right? And she comes across her and she has a talk with her, right? Now, the problem is, Sister Geraldine isn't supposed to comfort Sister Linda. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to say, look here, Sister Linda. I'm here to tell you that if you keep down that road, there's a dead end, right? Mm -hmm. And it ends with your life. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm going to tell you, you need to come away from that, right? Mm -hmm. She ain't supposed to coddle and say, oh, I, I understand, sister, you know. She's not supposed to say, oh, I've been there too, right, sister. Right, right. Now, guess what? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say that the young lady does repent and she comes up in the church, right? Sister Linda comes up in the church and she repents, but she backslids and now she messes around with a couple of brothers up in the church, right? Sister, sister uh, Geraldine ain't supposed to go over to her and say, I understand. I, I sympathize with her because, see, I used to be like, y'all have mercy on me, so maybe I have mercy on her too. But she's up in the church now. She done backslid. Mm -hmm. She ain't supposed to look at her old self and say, you know what, because I used to be that way, I, I, you know, y'all can have mercy on her. Yeah, if she repents, y'all mm -hmm. please have mercy on her. Right. But if she comes up in the church and next thing you know, she, she's whore hopping in the church. Mm-hmm. Then that woman need to be dealt with. She need to be put out of the church, then, right. if she's not going to repent. See, all that's you, the problem. If See? all of you say the church is the hospital, please save it for the birds. Yeah, save it for okay. the birds. <laughs> because that's overplayed. A lot of people keep saying that church is the hospital thing, and they don't understand, no, the church is not the hospital. But guess what, you young ladies? So then, what happens then when Sister Linda now then got her, hand, got her hands or got a hold of your husband? Now what? Now you want her to be put out. Now you want her out of the church, right? <laughs> this is what happens when you go. This is why. This is why. Why? We Listen. cannot be def deliberate defenders of wickedness. Yes. Because the scripture commands us to judge situations. Righteously. Among us. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, this, is, this is going to be actually the beginning of <laughs> yeah. um, a series that we want to yes. do. Now, many times we've talked about Yah's judgment, right? Yes. Okay, Yah's judgment upon wickedness. Yes. Whether it's the Israelites or the world. But we need to discuss how we as a people are to judge things because he tells us that we are to judge nations, that we will judge nations, right? And how can we judge nations if we don't know how to judge simple wow. matters? Wow, simple I'm matters. I'm talking about yep. simple matters among us. He says, how can you judge nations when you can't even judge the simple wow. stuff? Wow. And so this will be the beginning of a series. Yes. Um, and I think it's very important because too many times we see things played out over the internet yes. like we're a bunch of kids. You see, like we're a bunch of juveniles who don't yes. understand anything. And this is why uh, we are not our own government. We, we, we actually um, have to live under other people. That Most High says he's going to appoint terror over us because yes. we don't know how to judge situations properly. Yes. So this is a part of the punishment. 
the fact that we have to sit under these other nations and be governed by them and by their rules. We are not yes. a self-governing people nope. because the Most High don't want us to be until we can self-govern in righteousness. In righteousness. And That's so right. it needs to be learned. And how do you learn? How can you hear except there's a preacher? How can it be, they preach except they be sent? Yes. And so we need to understand this. And so this is one of those things that we're going to be covering, family. Yes. Because... I even look at simple things that happen in the world. Our people don't even know how to look at them and judge things properly. And I'm, when I say judge things properly, um, I'm talking about yep. looking at the situation yep. in its entirety, the way we were commanded to do, and weighing all of the information and making a determination in righteousness. We don't even know how to do don't that. Know how to do that. And so this is why <sighs> this is why the hammer continues to come down because our people don't understand the righteousness of Yah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 yes. verses 2 through 4. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 2 through 4 reads as follows. <clears throat> and when Yahuwah Elohekah shall deliver them before you, you shall smite them and utterly destroy them. You shall cut no covenant with them nor show, show mercy unto them. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter you shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall take unto your son. For they will turn away your son from following me, that they may serve other Elohim. So will the anger of Yahuwah be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. Now, the thing that, that's amazing about this passage, he told him, he said, he said, don't, don't. Don't, um, verse 2, um, thou shalt, shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Now, you see how we are today. See, that's what Christianity did. You mercy in everybody, right? Hey, y'all pouring judgment on them, and you mercy in them. You love everybody. You know, y'all sitting there <laughs> with, with a sickle trying to take them out, and you jumping in the way. No, y'all, no. You don't know what you're doing, y'all. He know not what he doing. Woo. And and I get it. You want to be like Moses. You know, I know <laughs> Moses was like that. You know, Moses, when he's like, Father, y'all, wait a minute. Father, y'all, wait a minute. But when y'all told Moses, you better do this, Moses knew he had to do it. Mm -hmm. like, like Moses knew he had to let them Levites go on those on those thousands of people that, that, that the Levites slew. Moses mm -hmm. couldn't stand in the way of that. Mm -hmm. Moses had to back up. Even with Jeremiah. Yeah. It got to a point where Jeremiah, he used to, he was the weeping prophet. He used to cry for y'all's people. Yeah. Weeping and moaning, y'all don't kill them, yeah. don't hurt them, don't get them right now. I'll be, I'll have mercy <laughs> on them for your name's sake, right? But it came a time where um, Jeremiah, he, he, he changed he, that he too. ended all of that. <laughs> that prayer changed up real fast. He said, I tell you what, kill them. Kill them. Kill them, y'all. <laughs> Judge them, make them widows, I make them bereaved of their children. So, I mean, the, the prophets of old, they didn't play. Was, was that a righteous prayer, y'all? Was it a righteous prayer? I'm asking you, right? Was that a righteous prayer? Was, Je when was Jeremiah, Jeremiah out of out of pocket? <laughs> <laughs> was he wrong when he prayed like that? Wow, it's in the scriptures. Matter of fact, y'all made sure the scribes put it in the scriptures. Mm. Wow. So again, Woo. was Jeremiah unrighteous when he started telling the Most High to kill the Israelites because they were just increasingly wicked? Mm, mm, mm. I'm curious to know what your, yeah. your answer <laughs> is in the comment section. Was that an unrighteous prayer when he told the Most High to kill them? Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. But guess what? Ain't y'all killing our, killing our people this day? He's still and doing you it. laying them out this day all the time. You look, it's in the news. Every time you look around. Whether the, the prophet news. pray for it or not. Yeah, y'all doing The it. most high decree, his, his decree is doing it. Yeah. You see, his decree that he already spoke out of his mouth shall not return voice. Yeah. So he is doing it, whether the prophet prays for it or not. Prays for it or not. Wow. This one is Numbers chapter 16, verse 26. Numbers chapter 16, verse 26 reads as follows. And he spoke unto the assembly, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that something? Mm. Wow. Wow. Did you hear to read that one more time? Wow. He said, and he spoke unto the assembly, yeah. to the church, y'all. To the church, yeah. Saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. 
and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all of their sins. Wow, don't touch it. Don't mm. even touch the thing. Woo, don't touch the stuff in their tents. Wow. I'm telling you right now. Woo, wee. This word of Yah is powerful. It's quick and, and powerful. You, you got to really look at these scriptures and say, man, is it like that? Boy, we don't understand how things are. We we don't just touch it. We hug it. We kiss it. We hold on to it. Yeah, yeah. We touch deliberately not, defend touch it. Touch not the unclean <laughs> thing, but now nah, you holding it and kissing it, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Cherishing mm -hmm. it. Cherishing it, right? Woo, boy, I tell you. You grab this profane thing and you making it, trying to make it holy. Mm -hmm. You mixing the profane with the holy. <laughs> mm -hmm. It kind of remind me, you know, you know, it's kind of amazing. You know, um, I've seen this happen too many times, right? Sister sees a brother. Here she's trying to get her life together for Yah. You know, she's trying to seek Yah. She's trying to get close to Yah and everything, right? And here comes this brother, right? And this brother comes along, and it's obvious that this brother is out there in the world like a wild dog. <laughs> wild dog. Mm. But no, I'm going to get him. I'm going to take him in. I'm going to clean him I'm up. I'm going to clean him up, put a Bible in his hand. Well, you just got a wild dog, clean wild dog with a Bible. <laughs> mm. You can't clean him up. That's y'all's work. So, so, wait a minute. There's some people, yeah. Let me tell you something. There's some people that Paul said, turn them over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh. Because they, they, they came in the congregation with the with Yah and the Spirit and the Holy Spirit in the congregation. And it ain't good enough to clean them up. So just turn them over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh. Because they too dirty in their flesh. He's too dirty. He's too much of a dirty dog. Mm, mm, mm. Then you done washed him and cleaned him up and he's still a dirty dog. His dirt ain't on his body. It's in his heart. Right. Man. Now the number of times we quote that scripture and people say, I never heard that one before. <laughs> the scripture says, Let, let's find let's it Let's find us. it. Let's find it. For those of you who don't believe that is there because. Type of destruction. We. We think that we're supposed to love everybody, forgive everybody, and take everybody in, and that everybody can be all right. Well, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verse 5. 5. It says, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Yah. Wow. You hear what he said? Mm -hmm. Turn, and, and that's because the brother, the, the, the brother he's talking about was wicked. He was what he was doing was wicked, and Paul in the church. Wait a minute, watch this. It goes back to what we're talking about, right? Because the, the assembly at Corinthians saw what was going on with this young man, mm -hmm. and it was horrible. And put and they were glorying in it. Yes, that's the and word. Paul yes, got angry with them. Yeah, Paul got angry with them. And Paul said, Y'all should have judged this thing. You should have judged this matter, right? right. Matter of fact, no, no, let's we gonna read it. Right. It's only a couple of verses. Read right here, verse one through four. Through 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 five. It Listen. says it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as not so much as named. Among the Gentiles. So the Gentiles wasn't doing this. Go ahead. That one of you should have your father's wife, and you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from among you. Wow! For verily, verily, as absent in the body but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that have done this deed. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, uh -huh. when you are gathered together, yes, and my spirit, together, and my spirit with the power of Yahushua, uh -huh. to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of Yah. So your glorying woo. is not good. Wow, you hear this? It says your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? So if you don't get it out of there, if you don't get it out of there, yes. that's sin is going to fester in the con congregation. Yes. It's going to grow. That's right. It's going to spread like a cancer. Like a cancer. Because you did not deal with it. 
They see they gloried in it. Paul, Paul's like, y'all should have mourned. Y'all were puffed up about this, man. Mm -hmm. So so now you got it. There it is. For those yes, of you who but, didn't know it was there, <laughs> and all these people in this assembly, they sided with them. Oh man, okay, okay. So y'all together now. Okay, okay. It's wickedness. Whew. See, pa 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 just said, a simple matter among you. Pa Paul said, Paul said, I haven't seen this one among the Gentiles. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> That's why when I hear sometimes our people talk about the wickedness of the Gentiles, yeah. um, Scripture says there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. And so much of what we see today is something that has already happened before. Yes. It is what it is, family. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go now to Psalms chapter 15. I'm trying to get to the keyboard. <laughs> okay, Psalms chapter 50. And this is verse 16 through 23. Pay attention. Psalms chapter 50, verses 16 through 23 reads as follows. But unto the wicked Elohim says, What have you to do to declare my statutes, or that you should take my covenant in your mouth? Mm. Seeing you hate instruction mm. and cast my words behind you. Wow. When you saw a thief, then you consented with him. Wow. And have been partakers with the breakers of wedlock. You give your mouth to evil, uh -huh. and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things have you done, and I kept silence. You thought that I was altogether such one as yourselves. Wow. But I will reprove you and set them in order before your eyes. Mm. Now consider this. Ye that forget aloha, lest I tear you in pieces. Wow. And there be none to deliver. Whoso offers praise glorifies me. And to him that orders his con conversation aright, will I show the Yeshua of Elohim. Wow. Now, now you got to pay attention. This is exactly what we're talking about here, right? Verse 18. It says, when you saw a thief, then thou consentest mm. with him. Yes. So mm -hmm. you 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 were like defending him and you were on his side? The thief? It kind of reminds me of the thief on the cross. I was going to go there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was coming up. Right. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. they, they jumped on his side, right? And didn't notice what he says here. Then he goes on and he says this here, right? He said, thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue to frame deceit. Right? Then he goes down. Let me show you a verse here. Okay, listen to what he says. He said, These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest. He said, Because I kept silent, you thought that was on your side. You thought I was like you. <laughs> no. Because I kept silent. He said, But now I'm going to reprove thee Damn and you. set them in order before thine eyes. Wow. Mm. And I'm going to tear you in pieces. Mm -hmm. And there will be none to deliver. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Yeah, did y'all just say he's going to tear some folk in pieces? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So wow. he ain't playing, is he? He ain't See, playing. See, that's what we keep trying to tell y'all, family. We keep trying to say that the Most High is not he's playing. He's not playing, yeah. And we see his judgment daily in the black community. Yeah, daily. He is not playing. So it's time for us to set some things in order, family. Yeah. This is uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse um, 10. And I can read this one. I can read this one. You can go to the next one, which is John okay. here. Okay, it says here, um, well, I'm going to go to verse before it. It says, Whosoever is born of Yah doeth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of Yah. Mm. Okay, and that's talking about walking in the spirit because you walk in the spirit, you're born of the spirit, you walk in the spirit, you can't sin because you walk, you can't, they do contrary one to the other. If you so that you cannot spirit. do the things that you, 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 if you're in the spirit, you ain't going to want to sin. That's how it works, right? Exactly. Then it says, in this, the children of Yah are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of Yah. Mm. Neither mm. he that loveth not his brother. Mm. 
So it just it just slung a sword, man. That's like a boom yeah. knockout punch. Yeah, because there's a lot of people hate man. their brother, hate their sister, hate yeah. their mother, father, aunt, uncle, grandpa. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall yes. wax cold. Now, now the part that gets me here, you gotta look at it. It says, "Whosoever do if not righteous is not of Yah." If you you can't sit up here and tell, I don't care how much you know you are an Israelite, and you are unrighteous, you ain't of Yah. That's why all this wickedness that we see on the internet, these so-called Israelites, they so full of wickedness and vileness and and just horrible um, things that they're putting out into the world, into the atmosphere yeah. on social media. Venomous words and venomous ways. Yes. You are not of the most high. Not. That's what the you word says. You are not of him. If you ain't if you ain't living a righteous life. Mm -hmm. And I mean righteous. Okay? Don't sit up here, you fornicating, you lying, you stealing, you doing all kinds of stuff. You ain't living a righteous life. And you and you hate your brother and your sister. Yeah. And you got a heart. A lot of the brothers jealousy hate, hate the daughters of Zion. Yes. You see, you hate the daughters of Zion. You hate your brothers. You hate your sisters. Yeah. You, hate, you are not of Yah. You're not of Yah. I don't care. You trying to you talk about you bring in rebuke. You know in your heart you can't stand the daughters of Zion. <laughs> you see, and you think you righteous? No, you are not righteous. And as a matter of fact, it says you are one of the children of the devil. You can quote all these scriptures in this Bible here, right? Satan can quote them. You can quote every scripture in this Bible. That don't mean you righteous. You got to live this thing. You yeah. got to walk this thing. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Let's go to this next one. This is the last scripture, and we're going to be uh, finished with the lesson. This is John chapter 18, verse 37 through 40. John chapter 18, verses mm, mm, 37 mm. through 40. Reads and I'm, I'm going to bring you up to speed on this, what's going on, right? This is when the Messiah was taken before uh, Pontius Pilate. He was taken before mm -hmm. Caesar, and so this is this is what's going on now. Okay, mm -hmm. and so go ahead and read. Okay, it says Pilate therefore said unto him, "Are you a king then?" Yahusha answered, "You say that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth hears my voice." Yeah. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Yahudim and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but you have, you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the, P the Pesach or the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Yahudim? Then cried they all again, saying, uh -huh. Not this man, but Baraba. Now Baraba was a robber, Barabbas. Uh. In other words, they said, free Barabbas, not this man. Wow. Leave Yahusha on the cross. Wow. On the stake. Free Barabbas. Now. Wow. Mm -hmm. So so you mean to tell me they all join sides to a thief? Deliberately defending wickedness. Mm, mm, mm. And, they, they, and there was no fault found in Yahusha, even by Pontius Pilate. And you know, every last one of them people that sided with, with Barabbas, you know they got judged. Mm -hmm. Every last one of them got judged. And I bet that when they died and they I lifted the day, they opened their eyes up and they realized, oh my goodness. You mean to tell me I chose a thief over the Messiah? Mm-hmm. Man! But let me tell you something. In today's time, they, they will be putting wings on their backs. Yeah. On the backs of the wicked. Yeah, Put, putting wings on. You All know. of those who sided with Barabbas, our people today will put wings on their backs. Wow. And mm -hmm. Barabbas' is back. And Barabbas, that's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. You get what we're talking about now? Deliberately, with wickedness. deliberately defending just, yes. the wicked. Deliberate. Very deliberate. Mm -hmm. All kinds of wickedness. We can't judge nothing right because the wickedness is in you. And yeah. this is why you side with wickedness right. deliberately. Because That's it's right. in you too. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's time to repent, family. It's time to repent. It's but we're gonna to bring repent. this, we're gonna bring this lesson about judgment. It's gonna be dealing with judgment. Mm -hmm. Righteous judgment. We're yes. gonna talk about it because it's 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 lacking. Yes. 
it's lacking. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you something. Boy, you don't want to know. Most of have said some things to me and shown me some things. And I'm to the point where I'm sitting there and I'm saying, man, Father, yeah, we as a people truly, as a whole, mm -hmm. don't know how to judge things righteously. Even leaders that are running the show among our people, even in the assemblies, even among those that know the truth, mm -hmm. are not righteous judges. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. And it's, it's, you know what that means, right? That means y'all going to judge. Yeah. That means y'all going to say, oh, yeah. since you can't judge, I'm going to judge. And that's why we sit back saying, how long, Father? He said, uh, uh, when I get done judging. Yep. That's how long. Mm -hmm. When I get done laying this hammer on you all, then that's when when it's going to be done. Yes. Okay. When I get done judging. Mm -hmm. I have Y'all have to judge because we don't. Mm -hmm. But if we stood back and we said, no, I'm not going to be a part of this. No, no, I'm not. Then y'all can bring forth um, um, where a person could cry out to him, and he he, he won't he won't be so hard in his sins. He, he'll realize his ways yeah. and cry out and repent. But because we we patting him on the back too much, right? We we mm. make it strong in their hand. Ain't that what the scripture said? Yep. <laughs> we strengthen the hands of evildoers. Yep. And so because of that, judgment must come. Yes. Hallelujah. Yep. Well, family, we love you. We love you all, family. Yes. We thank you for joining us on yes. the Shabbat. Absolutely. We absolutely. And I pray that the most I bless you. Mm -hmm. I want you to get some rest. Yes. And I want you to meditate on these scriptures. Yes, absolutely. Get into these scriptures and, and please consider what we are saying. Yes, absolutely. Hallelujah. We love you, family. Enjoy the yes. rest of your day. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, mm -hmm. family.